Hey guys, it is Sunday morning here in West Virginia, and sorry, I kind of forgot about our free at Friday. I got a little bit busy trying to do some things around the house, do some painting outside before winter hits again. So, taking advantage of the long weekend doing that. So, I have a little bit of time this morning, so we're going to go ahead and do this video for you. And we were only going to do one mini GT car today, but we're going to do two to make up for being late because I was possibly going to do a bonus video for the weekend. But since I missed Friday and now it's the last day of the weekend. Well, anyways, luckily it's a long weekend. You guys probably can watch this video sometime today and tomorrow. So anyways, one we were going to originally unbox is the, not really counterpart to him, but his competition, the new and improved R32, this guy here. This one we've already unboxed in the past. There's a video here on my channel, probably from late last year, early this year, when I was still in the Philippines. Um, I got the one that was sealed in the box. So you can go and check that out if you want a more detailed video on this one. Because we'll do a, a comprehensive review on it, but not like we did in that other video. The one we'll spend a little bit more time on today because we haven't done it yet. We did do it, but in a different color. We did it in Bayside Blue, not this white. So anyways, this is the R34 by Mini GT. And they actually have two of these white ones. Uh, this one has the white hood. There's one that has a carbon hood. So pretty cool. Cool. I was going to order both, but I just got the all white one for now. But I think I may end up getting the one with the carbon hood too. We'll see what happens. So anyways, let's get started here. So this is the Miho exclusive one. These do come in a global release. So it's not really limited to one of 3,800 for the car itself. Well, that's 3,960. Yeah, my eyes are not what they used to be. <laughs> so anyways, um... The car itself is mass produced. It is produced up to, well, 3,960 of them are produced for Miho. But the global released in the sealed box, I have no idea how many of those there are. The only difference is that the packaging. And sometimes the boxes, they used to be different, but I don't know. I cannot recall what the box the sealed box looks like for this one and then same thing with the top secret r32 i can't recall so i'll have to go back and watch my own video and later on to see if the boxes are different they used to be but that was the only thing um that differed the car if they didn't have this clamshell packaging and another thing that they do that is different is that the TSM holographic sticker is pasted here on the cardboard insert in this clamshell and instead of being on the back of the box. So, uh, anyways, some people cut these out and then paste them on the box and just keep the box. If they open these, some people don't open them. I open everything, and since I know these are official, I just throw the package. Some people use this to determine if it's a knockoff or if it's an original because when mini gt first launched there were some problems with people knocking off the light blue and gray r35s especially chase variants like the light blue one the knockoffs of a high wing on it that car was released with a ducktail style wing and anyways if you happen to get a chase with a high wing it's a fake because they never change the wings on the chase. It'll be same exact car just done up in bare metal, raw finish. Or it will have different color wheels and interior and base, something like that. But they never change anything with the body parts. They don't even change the wheel style. They just paint the wheels. So, anyways, that's why some people are very picky about having the sticker on the back of the box. And... Anyways, so let's get into this. So everything that's going to be on the box is here on the back of this clamshell. So we won't go over the box. We'll spin it around and let you look at it. So this tells you where to find Mini GT online, where to find them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And it tells you about choking hazards and things like that. And uh, with the age recommendation, because it is a collector's model, the licensing from Nissan, and then you have your Nissan Skyline GTR R34 V-Spec 
uh, in one white RHD, and these were only released in RHD because they keep them authentic, uh, as like how Nissan produced them. They are left hand conversions, but that's something you do in the aftermarket. So I've already cut around the back edge here to be able to flip this up like a door. So we're going to flip it up, take out the box, and then take out the car. And it has that nifty little PVC tray and such. So quick look at the box. This box also has a PVC tray in it in case you do open them and throw out the clamshell. It still has this so you can store your car in the box if you wanted to. So those are kind of nice features. And then anyways, it tells you the car's name, the Nissan Skyline GTR in white. And then, as I said, the warning labels, GTR on that end cap, Mini GT on that one. The only thing that wasn't on the back of the package is your collector model, model number 397. And then, as I said, there's where your sticker would be for TSM model. It's not there. So that's another re uh, way of telling if it was like a Miho exclusive too. Uh, some people would still be a little bit skeptical if it was... Uh, knock off or not. That's why sometimes it's good if they do make the boxes a little different for the Miho because then you'll know, well, it's a Miho exclusive. So, anyways, let's take a look at this bad boy. So, the only thing I'm not digging on this car, and it's the same with the carbon hood, is that they put black mirrors on it. I wish they would have been color matched to the body of the car. When I seen it, I almost thought the mirrors were broken off, but then I started looking and said, oh, there they are. And looking at the pics of both the carbon hood and this one, they have black mirrors and not color-coded mirrors. And has the six-spoke wheel on it, which I do like that wheel. The emblems here and the little badges there, whatever that one is for. The mirrors are rubber and pretty durable, too, as you can see them flexing there. You have acrylic headlight lenses. And... Now just rub them, make sure they're both there. Because they kind of look a little different sometimes. Then GTR in the grill. Your right openings in the front bumper cover. Your marker lights, turn signals. And you can see the gauge pod is on the right side. So it is right hand drive. And you can see the steering wheel on this one pretty clearly. And then you have detailed acrylic red tail light lenses, your high wing, which is stock, the double exhaust tip, GTR plate, and your license plate light, and other hazard light there. You have your rear window defroster in this one. I always thought the lines were too big on the rear window defrosters, but it just may be, may be me. Uh, then you have metal base, as always, and then it is held together with button heads, Phillips screws. You have treaded rubber tires, metal on metal. Very cool car. So, let's put him down here with the others. So, our white Nissan collection is growing. I forgot about this one the other day to put back out here is the... S15. I was trying to do all plain white cars, but that's kind of hard. Especially after I got the top secret one. Notice it has this livery all over the rocker panels and stuff. I went ahead and threw the S15 in here because it is mild with the yellow. I would say still 80% of the car is white. So anyways, this top secret is limited to 3,000. And as I said, that's just a Miho one. Still the car itself mass produced. Um, no difference between it and the world global release. So, let's take a look at the back side. As you can see, the TSM sticker. And then all the other same write-up as on the other one. Now, the only thing here, the difference is on um, the UPC, of course, it's going to be different because it's an R32. Top secret Nissan Skyline GT are VR32 white right-hand drive. Once again, these are only released in right-hand drive. And let's flip this open. And I did the same with this one. I cut around the back and make it where it flips up because I do keep these clamshell packages sometimes for a while at least till they start building up and getting in my way 
then I end up shit canning them. But I always keep my boxes. I never throw out the boxes. And the car fell out of the little tray. There's the tray for the blister pack. And here is the car. And then we'll take a look at the box of this one real quick. As you can see, no TSM sticker. Your licensing stuff. Same thing, top secret, right-hand drive, blah, blah, blah. Mini GT on this end cap. Top top secret on that end cap. Age recommendation, because it's a collector's model. Trucking hazard warnings. Pick of the die cast. And then the prints on the cards from the Miho blister pack. Those, I believe, are art prints. I don't think those are actual pictures of anything. They're kind of like... Uh, some kind of computer animation or something like that. But still pretty cool. And then, anyways, once again, you pop open the box. It has the global release tray in it, in case you do want to store it in the box after you open it. Which I don't. I try to get them out on display. So here's the car itself, and... It has the livery on the rockers, and then something about this car, I don't know why, maybe it's the height. It sets a little high, in my opinion, or the wheel openings are, I don't know, something's off with the car itself. Even looking at the real one, it's pretty damn close, but there's something just a little bit off on this one. But that's my own opinion, but it is bigger than the other one. Um, we will take a comprehensive review of both of them, uh, side by side, this one and the Nismo in another video. Maybe we'll try to do it Wednesday or something next week for you guys. But anyways, um, they did change up things. The whole roof line is different. Um, the overall like girth of the car, the width and the thickness is a little bit bigger Headlights are a little bit better on this one. They're a little bit smaller, narrower, more correct in my opinion. But this one is a little bit more, how can I say, pimped out because it is the top secret one. It has the bigger front bumper cover flared out a little bit more on the rear quarter and front fender. I can't really say it's a wide body, but it is flared slightly. Um, so it's a little hard to do an exact comparison if they take this casting and get rid of some of the top secret stuff and then do just a basic r32 then we can compare it but anyways they haven't done that yet so we'll do the best we can but this one i would say has its pros and the other one has its pros too in my opinion and we'll go over that next week so as you can see nice details everywhere on this one though acrylic tail light lenses and then it is screwed together with button head screws it has a rear air diffuser and some little side wings back here for downforce on the back and this panel covers the rear phillips head screw so you'll have to pop this off to get at the rear screw and as you can see it has a really big and thick front chin spoiler too so very cool car though I'm not cutting on it at all and as I said we'll do a comprehensive review on it and this one doing comparisons because I do like them both to be honest with you guys I will tell you that now and some have the, both have their downsides and both have their pros. So we'll take a look at what those are coming next week. But between now and then, we're going to do our Mopar Monday video with our M2 machine, uh, 71 Charger RTs in the high impact colors, the Moulin Rouge and then the neon yellow color. Can't remember the name of it. But anyways, we'll do that on Monday. So have a nice Sunday and have a nice Labor Day, but I'll be back on Labor Day with our Mopar Monday video. So thanks for watching, guys, and talk to you well tomorrow. Mm -hmm.